four divers missing after incident at Paria installation. Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Yard and Abroad TV. If you haven't subscribed to my channel as yet, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. Also, please remember to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post videos. So viewers, a desperate search has been launched to find four divers who disappeared yesterday during a maintenance exercise on a Paria trading company Sea line riser. A statement by Paria said that the men are private contractors employed with LMCS Limited who were conducting an underwater maintenance exercise at the number 36 Sea line riser on berth number 6 at Paria Trading Company Limited point appear. During the exercise, an incident occurred. The cause and extent are still being determined, which resulted in the loss of sight of the five member team who were being monitored from shore, Paria's statement said. It added that incident management protocols at Paria were immediately triggered in accordance with established standards. By 9 p.m. last night, Paria said one member of the team had been found and was in a stable condition at the San Fernando General Hospital. It said that further rescue efforts were underway with the support of the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. So people, these men went under water to do regular maintenance, something that they probably have done numerous times. Numerous times and unfortunately, this one didn't go as planned. Just sad and unfortunate people that like most of the time you just go there if you do a job and you never know what uh, malfunctions can happen. And this is one of them. So we are pray um, for them, find them alive, hopefully people. That's what we are pray for. So what we are going to do people, there is a video I saw on Facebook with a gentleman telling you how this could have happened. You see me? Check out the video people, all right? I am point up here right now on this situation. This riser here, controlling a hit of a habitat down there. They've had five men inside there working, and they had to the six inch pipe there. And something went wrong with a plug inside the pipe, and it created a back pressure, and they get stuck in the pipe. Now the pipeline is heading from here to that, to that, that area up there. That is the next end of the pipe up there. Right now, these divers here are going in to check to see. They're coming back here and they're going to plug the, plug the line. They're going to cap off the line and hoping they equalize the pressure so that they could hopefully recover the personnel down at that location. Yeah, man. So that gives you a little better understanding of how um this could have happened and as mr people we just have pray them locate them and they are alive and well you see me but people we already know the longer they are unable to be found we know how that are going to end because one of the gentlemen that was found alive um he's in the hospital in a stable condition them say so right now at the moment people we are running out of time and they are running out of ear. You see me people, it's just very, very sad and unfortunate um, that these gentlemen have to go through this. And the thing is, while the country awaits confirmation of the inevitable, and as I said people, we know why that will happen. Energy Minister Stuart Young has gone to the Point of Pier facilities of the Paria Fuel Trading Company Limited 
to be briefed on the horror involving a team of underwater welders. In a social media post, Young, who returned from a trip abroad on Friday night, said he was meeting with the families of the four divers sucked into a 36-inch crude oil pipeline and who have not been seen since Friday afternoon. So yeah, people, you know, watch the video that the man that was talking about what happened and, you know, realize that they was basically sucked into a pipeline, people. It was a pipeline they were sucked into. So can you imagine what they are going through, the difficulties that they face at the moment, people? Um, I truly hope a speedy recovery and them find these gentlemen, isn't it, people? Because you know them are the sole provider for them family members and you know what a family member for your mourn for them loved ones ah uh, because all they did was get up out of bed and went to work you see me we don't have to hear that people so when i go to people i'm uh giving updates once i get them available all right so just stay tuned to yard and abroad tv and please remember hit the subscribe button turn on post notification is my people much love, blessings, loving, all right? One of her sons drives the boat out there and he heard the emergency call. He left where he working with the boat and went and asked them what's going on here and they said the divers hasn't come up. He said but my father down there. Right so no response was made for anybody. No emergency stuff had come in yet and it had already passed half an hour. He said to 40 minutes. What he did now was call his other brother, his friend, my brother, his uncle then. All of them is commercial divers. They came within 40 minutes, right? Still no response there. My nephew and his friend, they started to hear noise in the pipe, right? Parry or whoever didn't want them to go down. Against instructions, my nephew and them gears up and they went into the pipe. And this is how they saved Christopher Budram, right? They took him out. When Christopher came out now, Michael Corban took him out. He started to shout and say, Go back for Paisy. Go back for Paisy. He right behind us, which is my brother in law. What was understood is that after the incident, they could account, he could account, Christopher could account for a certain amount of them. Anyhow, they had an air pocket, he said. They were sharing air tanks. Right? Christopher and Faizi decided to swim out because the rest couldn't make it. They were injured or they swam out. Christopher swear Faizi was behind him. When he came out, Faizi was not behind him. His son now, Michael, who went down and saved Christopher, went back into the, the pipe. He went in with oxygen? Yes, he went with a hose. He went back into the pipe and he found his father's tank GoPro and his torchlight. No Faisal Kurban. He came back out because that was all the rope he had. So he had to come back out. Now, if we did not have relatives that can swim or as divers, we would be. When they came up now, they said, my nephews them told me, they heard a knocking on the next end of the pipe. They went there, they put their ears on the pipe and they were listening a safety officer or something now they suspected it was a crane making this knocking noise so they cut the crane and then they put the air again Nicholas said how long you have to put your ears for 10 minutes 10 minutes and you could hear a, a slight knock or like the guy or like in pain he not sure because this member this is through a pipe he says songs travel and this is what they hear my, my they came and they wanted with commercial gear or something to go in now they couldn't go in 
or I don't know what, I don't want to put words in my mouth, but I'm not sure where we went, but they did not go in. It took hours, hours for, what's the name of the, the robot? What's the, the name RV. of it? The RV to go in. This is hours, eh? I talked about probably five o'clock this morning, four o'clock or something this morning. Check the time. Right? When they went in, it was blocked by some diving tanks. They had to come out. My other brother said some operation was supposed to happen because that tank blocking and if they had to pass that, they can't bring out an injured person. So they went the other way or something but, and they, they made up a clog or a blog or something. And this is, for as far as we know right now, 